light is so weird right now, but good morning. I'm Olivia Savannah here from Olivia's Catastrophe, and today it's the 1st of April, which means all the world's a page readathon has literally just begun. And I didn't make a TBR because I'm not really feeling TBRs lately, but I thought I could just vlog my way through the month and take you with me. I've got a lot of fun things planned for April, so this is the first of four reading vlogs, I think. Four or three, we'll see. So as it's a Friday morning, on Friday mornings, before work starts at 9am because I work from home on a Friday usually, I take a walk and I go and do my food shopping. Sorry about the weird lighting. I also wanted to let you know that I'm going to be starting my very first book of the readathon. I am Team Tragedy and one of the prompts is to listen to an audiobook. So I will be listening to an audiobook as I walk to and from the shops this morning. I will be listening to Hunger by Roxane Gay. This is a memoir that Roxane Gay has written about her body, about hunger, about her body image and food. And it was recommended to me by Kevi. I love her channel. And whenever I watch it, I always say the beginning with her. Hey y'all, it's me Kevi. I just find that so much fun. But anyway, yes, so because she recommended it to me in the comments and she said reasons why I would like it and I thought, hmm, those are reasons why I would like it. I should stop letting it ferment on my Kindle and actually read it. And I thought listening to it because it's non-fiction would be a good one. It's not a long audiobook, so therefore it will be very good for me to kick off something, tick off something from this readathon at the very start. Let's get some food shopping done. It's the end of my work day, which means it's officially the weekend and I'm so ready for this weekend. But let's do a bit of a reading update. I did listen to one third of Hunger while I was walking to and from the shops and unpacking the shopping and everything. And it's off to a very good start. I will say that part one felt very repetitive. It's very short, it's just the beginning. It reads very much like an introduction, but I did find it a bit too repetitive for my liking, but then the story kind of kicked off and it went back to her childhood and kind of the starting of her situation with her body and eating. And I don't want to give anything away, but there is a big content warning for this one. So I'll leave that down below as the first content warning for this book in my description box down below. But hearing about her journey and her reasons why she f fell into the habit of eating really brought up the concept and a good reminder that you shouldn't judge people by their appearance. And there's lots of ways that you can judge someone by their appearance, but assuming that you know their story, especially in terms of fat people, is one that people really make a lot. And it was just nice to see her kind of unpack that. But when it started to get more personal, I can't deny her personal story. I can't say that's not legit. Like. It, it's heartbreaking to read about and it's a very moving memoir but at the same time I can say that the writing style just isn't for me. I feel like sometimes she's trying to be poetic in the ways that she uses repetition and it doesn't work for me, it just falls a bit flat and I don't know there's something about the way this story is told that I'm not connecting to it as much as I hoped I would but I can't exactly put my finger on what it is as of yet, but maybe if I listen to the next two thirds, I'll be able to tell you. Also, I just want to take it back. When I said that it was a short audiobook, I now acknowledge that six hour audiobooks are not short audiobooks to most people. I don't listen to too many audiobooks, and when I do, it tends to be long, big reads, like 20 hours plus. So that's why it's short to me, but it might not be to everyone. And I am listening to this on Script. Script is a great app where you can listen to as many audiobooks as you want in the month with your subscription. They also have ebooks on there. So if you want a bigger ebook choice, but you also just want to be paying for your audiobooks and your ebook subscription all in one, you can do that with Script. They have podcasts, they have newspapers, they have quite a lot. And if you would like to try their program for 60 days for free you should click the link in my description box down below and if you do so I also get a free 30 days of using script so it supports me too I just have to mention that 
But one more reading update. While I was on my lunch break, I started to read The Book of Form and Emptiness by Ruth Azeki. Of course, I'm one of the people who take off the dust jacket while reading, so this this is what the cover looks like. That's that's the cover. And this one is long listed for the Women's Prize. I'm reading it because Canongate do monthly read-alongs and I am joining in. So as April has started, I've started to read towards the first chunk and on my lunch break I read 50 pages. I actually already started this one before, so I just restarted it. But yes, I read 50 pages and I already love the 50 pages I've read. This one follows Benny O and he's a young boy and his father dies suddenly. After his father's death he starts to hear voices and these voices are the objects and items around him kind of speaking and talking and it becomes very overwhelming and Benny finds refuge in a library but so far in these first 50 pages it's really just focusing on the grief. <laughs> if you've watched my eclectic tag you know why this book is immediately pulling to me with that theme but it also does such a good job of not just looking at Benny O and his grief but also his mother and their relationship and it's it's just talking about the family unit and how they came together and how they came to be while also simultaneously being in the present day timeline where they're suffering from their grief. And it's beautifully handled and beautifully written. Ruth Zeki's writing style is lovely. Really, really enjoying this one. Straight off the bat, I can predict that this is either going to be a four star or five star read for me. But it's a big book and this one is going to be towards my big book prompt. But it's Friday and I've got plans and those plans are hair plans. It's time for this hairstyle to go and for another one to come in. So while I'm undoing all of these plaits so that I can wash my hair, I'm going to be watching a film and I'm going to be watching... I haven't actually checked that it's available online, but I want to watch the latest Fast and Furious because it's the only Fast and Furious film I haven't seen. And if you don't know, hi, I'm Olivia Savannah and I am trash for the Fast and Furious films. <laughs> I love the first one, it's my absolute favourite. Seven was Wicked as well, my second favourite. And since then, most of the rest of them are just actually trash. They're just so bad, they wouldn't happen. But I like seeing fast cars and I like seeing the found family dynamic. So I'm gonna watch it. It's time to undo this, give it a wash, let my afro breathe for a bit. And then tomorrow I am going to get my hair done. Colour is going to be decided in the shop and I guess you'll see the style in a bit. time to kick off this massive update. So things have been happening. <laughs> Yesterday straight after work I started to undo my hair and that took a lot of time. I did watch Fast and Furious 9 and I absolutely <laughs> loved it. I love that film so much. It definitely goes up there not with my ultimate favourites but it's one of those ones that I'd be happy to watch again and will re-watch a lot in the future like I do with all the rest of them but more than you know Tokyo Drift and the second one so it's it's a it's a very solid film is it ridiculous yes do they survive things that they shouldn't survive yes are there surprise characters that shouldn't exist or we should have known by now yes I don't care I loved Fast and Furious 9. I also spent some of my time yesterday evening joining in with Julia from Shakespeare and Such's opening reading sprints for the readathon and there will be reading sprints throughout the month. I don't know how quickly I'm going to get these vlogs up, so maybe you already know, but I'll be doing some reading sprints later. I wasn't reading because I was undoing my hair and that takes a long time, but I just wanted to go there, show some appreciation during the reading sprints. I was watching Fast and Furious 9 and undoing my hair. It was all good. So I got my hair done and while I was on the way there and on the way back I tend to enjoy reading young adult contemporary as my like travel book because I do have a tube journey when I'm going into the office or just when I'm going to see and do things. I tend to read a young adult contemporary book. And so I started reading Second Chance Summer by Morgan Matson. I've really been enjoying Morgan Matson's contemporary books. They're usually middle of the road ratings for me and even though I find them incredibly predictable and incredibly mediocre, they are so satisfying and comforting to me. They are just 
the good vibes only books that I really enjoy. But I don't think this one is going to be good vibes only because this one is following a family who tend to all do different things during the summer holidays but this time they're going back to their summer house that they haven't been to for years and spending a summer all together because something is happening with the family and I don't think it's a spoiler to tell you, it doesn't tell you on the synopsis but it tells you in literally the first few pages that somebody in the family is terminally ill. So it's about the family kind of dealing with that and reckoning with that and having one last summer together but it's also called Second Chance Summer because our main character, Taylor, used to have a boyfriend when she was 12 and used to have a best friend when she was 12 and something went completely wrong and she hasn't been there since so maybe she's going to get a second chance with these people and I was wondering like oh I'm enjoying this book and of course it's got kind of grief vibes in it because terminal illness is kind of the grieving process that starts early so of course I'm liking it for that reason because I find that an interesting topic to read about but I realised what I do like about Morgan Matson's books is that while they're young adult contemporary with a focus on romance, she always, always puts a focus on a friendship as well. And this is about a second chance romance, but also a second chance friendship. So I'm just enjoying that aspect. I've read a quarter of this book so far, so I've actually made so much progress today. And it's going to be for the prompt for a book about family because well, it's also about the friendship and the romance, it's definitely about family. Have also been reading, I just finished having a cup of tea and reading The Count of Monte Cristo because I'm gonna finish it this month. I need to stop, you know, <laughs> emphasizing everything I'm saying. But I am gonna finish this book this month. This is a buddy read that I'm doing with Abby from Abby of Pelinor. We started January 1st and we're gonna be finishing this month. We had to take a break last month because I'm pulling back from buddy reads all in all, I'm just pulling back from buddy reads. It's not my reading style at the moment, unfortunately, even though it's so much fun for me to do, I just can't keep up with them. But I am gonna be finishing this off with her. I think everything's coming to a boil. We've got the last 200 pages that I'm gonna be reading this month and I am excited. Ooh, even the chapters that I read today, something went down and it's it's been a massive build up it's a it's a massive book so there's been massive build up but it hasn't dragged at any point and I'm enjoying this one I'm enjoying it after I read those chapters I phoned both of my parents individually because it's their birthday today my parents are born on the same day same year their time twins is kind of great and so I phoned them I had a bit of a catch-up and a chat I think that's everything I have to tell you so for now I'm gonna go and do some more reading because we're in a readathon. I'm so excited about reading, but I'm going to finish listening to Hunger. I've only got an hour left after I finished Fast and Furious 9. While I was undoing my hair, I still had a good hour <laughs> of hair to undo. And with that, I listened to more of it. So I guess I should give another reading update. Whew, so many updates here. And I have to say, I'm really, really appreciating Hunger a lot more in this middle bit that I've read. I thought that I had a good perception of self-body image and fat shaming because I've read books about it and I've had this discussion several times with my friends and I read up about it and I keep myself informed and yet still this memoir has taught me so much about so many things that I don't have to consider in my life that she considers and how it makes her feel and I just hit me a lot last night when I was listening and I think that middle section really drove home the key elements of this book and if you're feeling a bit wavery at the beginning I say just push through like I did because when it gets to the thick of it this book really just takes home how much what other people think about your body the way they act the way they even look at you sometimes can really affect you and some of the things that she was talking about I could relate to from the perspective of being a black person or I could see traces of it in the disabled narratives that I've read and it was just something I just had never really put the pieces together that I put together while I was listening and it's just so valuable to hear her personal experience as well but yes I'm gonna get some ironing done because I've got clothes that I need to iron and I like ironing it's therapeutic to me it's one of my favorite things to do to just chill out which I know is strange so tomorrow morning I'm gonna have a cup of tea and we should choose the tea from the tea calendar exciting okay this is my fifth vlog of the year so it's the fifth tea and that's this one. Supreme Matcha Green. The finest green tea and matcha blended to be supremely smooth. Here is a cup to make you feel supreme. Organic matcha and tea, the purest green. 
this is going to be interesting. I really like green tea. I think green tea is great. However, I'm not a big fan of matcha flavours. I've realised it's not my favourite flavour. But I'm open to try. This green tea matcha combination could be good. I'll give you some thoughts tomorrow. Sangay and that ending was really really good really really powerful and I just really liked the way this memoir went and I would very much recommend it it was just such a solid read I learned so much and I think there's so much people can take away from it as well very good very very good Kevi you were completely right and with that I ticked off the prompt for King Leah if only characters saw past their pride and greed and listen to each other listen to an audiobook that is Done. I'm back from work and I'm very tired but I thought I should do this update now while I am not too tired that I don't want to do an update. So what has been going on? I have started reading The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna and this is a historical fiction book. It's about this small family of a husband, a wife and a daughter who moved to Alaska because they inherit a home and it's just about them trying to survive in the wilds of Alaska in the Great Alone with this small village and the dad is an ex-soldier from Vietnam and you can clearly see that he has PTSD and the effects of that on the family. Which prompt does this fit into? That is a very good question. None of them, except for the one about complex family, which I originally said was going to be for Second Chance Summer, so we're going to switch it up a bit. The first 100 pages of this, and I'm loving it. There's just something about the writing that is absolutely drawing me in. Kristen Hanna's writing style is its beautiful. It's so beautiful. It's not lyrical or anything special, but the way that she has created these characters has woven them into being is fascinating to me and they feel very realistic and honest. I think I can see the direction that the story is going to go into and I'm very much here for it and ready to see how it's going to unwind. I read that while I was going to work today and coming back so I'm approaching the halfway mark. I'm not quite there yet. I'm putting this for happy ending because even though I do think it deals with grief which is not particularly happy, I think the friendship aspect and the romance aspect could have a happy ending here so that could fit into the prompt. You will have seen that yesterday Tamara came around and we watched King Richard which was a bit bittersweet watching seeing as all that has gone down with the factors of Will Smith but in and of itself it was a really really good film. The acting was absolutely phenomenal. I'm a big fan of tennis, it's my number one sport to watch so of course I wanted to watch this film ever since I heard about it especially with it revolving around Venus and Serena and well mostly their dad but what I found really good about this film is how much it spotlighted Venus. I think because of injuries over the years, she's become more underrated and everybody knows about Serena Williams and people tend to forget about her. So it's kind of nice to see some of the spotlight on her and it was just a very, very good film. Loved it. It's nice to spend time with Tamara. We had Jamaican takeout, which was great. I also had that tea, which was the matcha green tea. I was pleasantly surprised. I wouldn't say I would love it, I wouldn't go and buy a whole box of it, but I wouldn't say no to having another mug full of it, so it was better than I expected. I was expecting to not like it and I think it was absolutely fine. It was mostly green tea with just a light taste of matcha, which is definitely the way to go, seeing as I don't like matcha. And you will also see, from now on, lots of clips of London Book Fair. London Book Fair is happening this week, I am attending as 
part of my job working for a publisher is to help with the stand and everything that we've got going on there for Canongate. So you can look at the beautiful Canongate stand with the beautiful designed up bookshelf that I neatly arranged and everything and see a bit of the book fair. I'm hopefully going to go to some talks. back from another day at London Book Fair, another day at work, and all I have to say is that today I had time to see Maggie O'Farrell give a talk which was really amazing. As you all know, I loved Hamlet so very much and was one of my favourite reads of last year, and it was just so good to hear her talk about the configuration of Hamlet, how she wrote it, how she got her research and facts, and what it was like for her writing it as someone who is both a mother and a daughter, and it was just so fascinating. She talked so well, and there were quite a few questions about some of her other works. She's got an upcoming book that she talked about for a little bit, but she also talked about her non-fiction book, I Am, I Am, I Am, which I was gifted for Christmas by Dom from Dom P is here and it makes me want to read it right now but I've decided that that's not a good idea and I've been reading more Second Chance Summer that's going very well there was a bit of an emotional moment but there was also a bit of a grand reveal moment that fell quite a bit flat it was not as dramatic as everybody everything was building up for it to be so it was a bit disappointing <laughs> I hope you enjoy the yellow glow from my evening light that I tend to use and the scented candle is making my room smell like green lemon tea which is lovely. London Book Fair has just finished. It's been a lot of fun but also very exhausting. I got to meet Leanne from Leanne Rose which was nice to see her in person. She was absolutely lovely. I got to see Stacey Halls in a talk. There was a talk which was all about how authors write and how they handle their writing process and it was with Stacey Halls, Tim Sullivan and also Mindy Johnson so it was nice to hear all of their thoughts but I was especially there and excited for Stacey Halls. I've only got 50 pages left of Second Chance Summer. All I really want to do is read classics and read Morgan Matson. That is the mood that I'm in at the moment. I've really enjoyed Second Chance Summer. There's just something about the way it's describing family that I find really beautiful and everything that I said I liked about Morgan Matson is in this book and I'm just really, really enjoying it. Canto Monte Cristo, I've got a cup of tea and I'm just about to read my next two chapters of this. A lot has been happening. It's been quite suspenseful. We have crossed the 700 page mark, which means we have about a hundred and about 200 more pages to go, just under 200 more pages of this chunker to go and some things have been revealed that are very exciting. It's so hard to talk about this book without giving any spoilers but it's good. Basically I just want to read this and the Morgan Matson and Phantom of the Opera which I will be reading very soon but not yet, not yet. I'll get back to that soon. So the situation with the Phantom of the Opera is I've only got 100 pages left but I'm gonna count it towards this readathon because we don't have any rules here. You can finish books that you've already started in previous months. We've always said that the readathon is chill, so I'm going to take advantage of that and read the last hundred pages of The Phantom of the Opera and count it for this readathon. I'll be counting it for the prompt of read an expensive book. If it wasn't gifted to me, it would have been an expensive purchase.
Where are we going? So we're in Seaford mm -hmm. and we're walking to Eastbourne. Mm -hmm. Up a Seven Sister Cliff. And who's this? This is Tom. My boyfriend. Hello, I'm Tom. <laughs> <laughs> New introduction to Olivia's catastrophe. <laughs> <laughs> It has been a long time since I've updated this vlog, so I hope you've been enjoying all of that b-roll that you've probably been seeing, but let's talk about books and let's talk about what's been going on. So the first book I want to briefly talk about is The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna, where I still don't know where it's going to fit into the prompts, but I am now well over a third of the way through this book and streaming my way towards the halfway mark. We've had a bit of a time jump, so our main character is now older, but there's still very much the same tensions and situation going on. I didn't expect the time jump, I thought it would continue in the linear path it was going, but it hasn't phased me, it's still been a very good read. Again, I'm still just loving the characters and seeing their development but also their setbacks quite a bit and I just want to know where the story is going to go. It's been very interesting seeing our characters get used to living in Alaska and everything that the wild can bring but also in terms of the relationship, the possible romantic relationship, something has happened that I didn't very much expect so I don't know where anything is going and I'm just sitting here along for the ride and enjoying being along for the ride. I also read a quarter of the way through The Ruth Lezeki, The Book of Form and Emptiness, the way that I said I was going to, and I am absolutely in love with this book. The writing is just captivating me all the way through, and what I really like about this first quarter is that you can see that both of these characters are grieving, and they're each grieving in their individual ways. The mother is, and the son is, and they're not the kind of grieving where it fits in harmony. I feel like lots of portrayals of grief that I see in books are where the family are grieving and they kind of support each other in their grief. But these two characters grieve in very distinctive and different ways. And what they're facing in life, the mother in terms of the threatening of unemployment that continues to happen to her, and the son in trying to grow up and he started to hear these voices of these objects. 
they're both grieving in very distinct and different ways that clash each other so they can't support each other through their grief and they don't understand each other and the book is emphasizing that so well and you can see Benny and him hearing the voices of all of these objects as a metaphor for mental illness if you'd like and it's just done so well I think I'm gonna love this book five star prediction this one might have it in the bag. I went on their Emirates airline cable cars, which are just a nice thing to do in London to just see the view and cross the water. And it was very cozy, a fun thing to do. And after that, we went and got dumplings from Beijing Dumpling, which is one of my favorite places to eat in Chinatown. The dumplings are very, very impressive. It was a bit of a wait, it was a bit of a queue, but it was worth it for the great fried rice and the great dumplings I had for dinner. Yum. And on the train to the hike that I did, which you've already seen, but on the train there, I finished reading Second Chance Summer by Morgan Matson. And I can probably say that this is my favorite Morgan Matson book that I've read so far. I think I've been very, very straightforward about saying how her books tend to be mediocre and they're all mediocre, but I love them regardless of them being mediocre. And now I'm proud to say that this one rose above the mediocre vibe to me. There were some things that I wasn't so happy to see in there. But other than that, I do think this book has a lot to credit it with. The grief, you know, of course my favourite Morgan Matson is the one that deals with grief, but the portrayal of grief and terminal illness I think was handled very sensitively and was very accurately done. As someone who has slowly lost people to cancer before, I think the representation and portrayal of that just was very accurate and yeah it, it was done very well and it felt very truthful and of course all of the experiences with cancer are very different and individual and you can't say that all of them feel the same but to me this kind of reminded me of certain things and struck home and I thought it was done very very well. I really liked what it said about friendship and relationships and I think it just managed to balance all three of those things the portrayal of grief the friendships and the romantic relationship really nicely and at the end I was feeling very emotionally moved in a way that I haven't with the other Morgan Matson books. I could just feel this one in my heart and I think it's a good book because it still managed to capture the summer vibes and summer feeling even though it was looking at so many other things so I was very very impressed. And then Second Chance Summer fits Titus Andronicus when family drama becomes messy to the point of violence. Read a book about family and that is a book all about family. Then we went on the hike. So yesterday my sister, you, you met them, Tamara and Tom and I, we went on the Seven Sisters hike. So we started, we took the train to Seaford in the morning and then we hiked our way up and down, up and down the cliffs all the way to Eastbourne and then in Eastbourne we had dinner and drinks and then came back to London and it was really really nice. I'm someone who really loves hiking. If you've watched any of my Australia and New Zealand vlogs and even if you were here back in the early days when I had my Spain vlogs, you will know that I really adore hiking and being out in nature. I think it's really fun. I think it makes me happy and it's good for me and it's something that I've missed being in London and I haven't seen the sea in absolutely ages thanks to the pandemic. So getting to see the sea was just a blessing in and of itself. Great, such a good hike, great company. It was sunny, it was nice, and I had the time of my life yesterday. And then this morning I thought I need to just sit down and chill in bed. I've been losing my voice. I'm not sure you can hear it, but I have a sore throat and just periodically throughout the week I've done more talking at like London Book Fair and being social than I usually ever do in a single week so my voice is struggling and grating so I thought it would be good to not only take some Lemsip but also to have a cup of tea and just sit down and read through a short book. So I read Why You Should Read Children's Books even though you are so old and wise by Catherine Rundell. And this is an essay, it's 60 pages long, so it's definitely a short book. And it's all about why it's important to read children's fiction, even though you're an adult. And I think it did such a good job with that. I can proudly say I wholeheartedly agree with every single word and everything she says in this essay for not only the importance of children's books, but where they come from, why we should still be reading them, but also how you should get your hands on them and the importance of them being available for free to all children everywhere. So she talks a bit about libraries in that context and also the importance of seeing yourself in a book, which 
touches on representation and there were just loads of things in this which I wholeheartedly agreed with. I actually did a module on children's fiction when I was at university on my year abroad so this very good little book, if you can read this essay, I say go for it because it was very enlightening and I really enjoyed it. Fit the prompt for Macbeth, well that escalated quickly, read a short book and as it's 62 pages of course that fit that prompt. And then after that, even though my voice has been coming and going, I buckled up because this is the one day this week where I actually have time to sit down and film. So I finally filmed my wrap up and three other videos, go take some thumbnails, I did my nails, they're nice and bright yellow because I've been feeling sunny and happy and ready for spring and having a good time. Hey, so I'm actually going to end the video here right now. I'm not feeling 100% so I didn't vlog anything today, I've just been taking lots of naps, drinking lots of tea. My voice is coming and going. I don't know if you can tell how broken up it is, but I'm just not feeling 100%. So I'm gonna have an early night and just try to rest and relax and hopefully recover. I'm not gonna go into the office tomorrow, but this is the end of the first vlog and I shall start another one tomorrow. We've got a lot done this vlog, so I feel like it's it's been a good time. Please let me know in the comment section down below what are you currently watching? I'm still watching Kuroko's Basketball. But let me know what TV series you are watching and enjoying at the moment or any films. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more. And don't forget to hit that notification bell to be updated every time I have a new video. You know what they say. Onwards and upwards. Excelsior.